Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello, and thank you for joining us on Deeper, your daily Bible study. I am David Salazar, and with me is Dr. Tim Ramsey, and together we will continue to study the book of Revelation. Now, before we start, we want to ask the Lord to be with us, so we invite you to bow your heads with us as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day and for, once again, the blessing to come together and to study your word. We know, Lord, that we are not uh, worthy in ourselves to uh, have any knowledge but you have been so gracious to us in giving in your son to die on the cross for us and to also give us the gift of the Holy Spirit and your word so that we may be able to know your will and what it is that you have for us in these last days. We ask that you will prepare our hearts so that as we study together, your truth may come and may be clear in our minds. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Tim. Well, uh, we have had an interesting week. I, I'll say a blessed week, haven't we? Amen. <laughs> it's been a, it has been a very interesting week. I mean, we have gone through uh, really what who should have t- should take an hour each verse. We have tried to accomplish in in, in just a few minutes, and obviously, it's is never we don't do justice really to the amount of of of, of things that we can actually bring out of this uh, wonderful chapter of chapter 14 of Revelation. But uh, we certainly want to bring out today, uh, sort of finishing the week, the, I guess, the basis or the, 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 the reason behind the understanding the three angels' messages, and specifically the third angel's message. And I know there is, a, you have a quote with us, uh, Tim, that I would like you to read for our for our friends, uh, you know, that explains from prophecy what the three angels message is, because some people miss the idea and they just think it's all about the papacy or the mark of the bees and getting get to know the name, but they don't. They really miss the the true understanding. I mean, I have uh, had friends who, throughout their youth and their you know childhood, they went to uh, churches and they all they when they were here about the angels messages or the third angels message it was all about the paper cds the paper see that the number is this then you know and all of that and really they have they have missed what is really about so tim can you read it for us this uh quote that you have for us now that's right i will let me read one bible verse first uh to set this up because why does god give the three angels messages As you said, David, it's not just to tickle our imagination or to make us smarter than the person next to us that hasn't studied prophecy. Mm -hmm. It's to transform us and change us. Psalm 119, verse 25, David writes this, My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. And quicken literally means give me life, make me alive again. Mm -hmm. The word of God, the messages of God, including the three angels' messages, God gives them to transform us, to change us, to give us spiritual life. Now, having said that, here is the statement uh, written by Ellen White in Review and Herald, April 1, 1890. And she says this, Several have written, written to me inquiring if the message of justification by faith is the third angel's message, and I have answered, it is the third angel's message in verity. Thank you, Tim. And so... Mm. This justification by faith, righteousness by faith, that's what we're talking about today. Amen, exactly. It is important to understand. Now, how exactly is it, though, that is we find the, you know, the righteousness by faith in the third angel's message? Uh, how come very few people seem to find it? And again, there has been an attack over and over again by Satan, uh, by, by clouding the minds, even of some more, our own leaders or ministers even, to bring only an aspect of the third angel's message that clouds the perception or the view of Christ from it. And it becomes a message of hate almost, of just, uh, you know, denouncing a um, system. But really, they don't put Christ in its, in its center. And that's that's the reason we want to see today. How, why do they miss? What, why do they don't see it there? And we, today we'll try to address that uh, issue or, or, or at least show it from the word of God that it actually is the, the righteousness of our faith. It is about Jesus. And so 
the first thing we have to see, if you, you know, uh, grant me some a little bit of time, is to see that it is a warning. It gives us a warning. It starts with a warning because it is what we don't have, what human beings don't have. I mean, we have seen throughout the first, second, and third angel's message, we have seen warning after warning after warning, a call to worship the Lord, a call to remind us that we are in, in, in time of judgment, a call to leave Babylon. And then the third is a call to <clears throat> not receive the mark. Now, ultimately, we know that this will happen at the very last end of Earth's history. It will, be, it will happen when the image is set up, when Sunday is enforced, there will be a, a, a forced system of religion, of beliefs on the world. But to be able to withstand that, the question is, how do I do that? Is it something I can prepare mentally, prepare by living and fleeing into the remote area and, and somehow that will prevent me from following into that? There's nothing, nothing that you can do humanly that will prevent you from following into deception or to be forced to accept deception as truth. However, that is why the important part of, the, of, of this angel's message is chapter verse 12, where it starts mentioning, here is a patient. See, this is the key. I am giving you the, uh, the reasons why this is going to happen, what's going to happen in the world. But the key is here. Here is the patient of the saints. Here is how you're able to withstand you're able to endure you're able to con to, to be able to go through that time and not follow victim of deception here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of god and the faith of jesus now <clears throat> this is important Tim, because it, it brings us two aspects that jesus had uh, 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 when he was on this earth one of these aspects is that he kept the commandments of god did not he not? Jesus kept all the commandments, correct? Did, did, was he uh, ever caught guilty of breaking one of the commandments of God? Absolutely not. It was actually his his faithfulness and obedience uh, was a, a huge factor in his condemnation and crucifixion. Exactly. The fact that he did keep the commandments of God. Absolutely. I mean, it was nothing he did. Uh, against the commands of God. He kept always the law. He delighted himself in, in following the Lord's commandments. And then the second thing he has, or the, also the ones that are going to endure uh, to the end of time, the saints, are those that have the commandments or keep the commandments of Jesus, of, of, of God, but also have the faith of Jesus. Again, Jesus had a faith that did he live by sight or by his own strength or by faith? What will be the answer, Tim, <laughs> to that question? He consistently and continually told his disciples, I don't go where I want to. I don't say what I want. Everything that I do and say is at the direction of my father. Absolutely. He didn't take one aspect of his own divine power to supply to himself. You know, he never tapped into that, you know, divinity that he had to be able to f find shelter for his own human needs. There was, you know, he never did uh, use the, the power of, on himself, he always lived, and even the power he exercised in healing was through faith in God. And that's why, you know, it, it is important to understand. Now, there has been an attack, and I want to mention this briefly right now. <clears throat> Sadly, there's an attack by, by many uh, who have rejected the concept of saints, human beings, although fallen and although, you know, in, in sinful flesh, they, they reject the concept that God assures them that they can also have victory, that they can also have these characteristics of Jesus. They can actually be faithful to the law by Christ, having Christ in their hearts, that they can actually have the faith of Christ by having Jesus in their hearts. And they reject this concept and they say that we should read this verse in, in this way. They that keep the commandments of God and the faithfulness, not the faith of Jesus, but the faithfulness of Jesus, connecting these two concepts to Jesus being the one that did it for us. So all I have to do is be willing to believe that since Jesus was faithful in the commandments and Jesus was faithful to the Lord, then I can also be called a saint and I can be part of that group because I just believe in his merits and he doing the work for us, for me, not me having to do my part, not me having to overcome necessarily my life. I just have to believe that Jesus did. Now, this is, again, what is being pushed, is being said. Sadly, some even preach it in our churches. And that is, again, not what the Word of God says. 
Now, and the reason why is this, what is really righteousness of Jesus? What does it mean to have his righteousness, to receive his perfect robe of righteousness in my life? It means that I no longer am bound to sin. I'm no longer uh, f- uh, chained to continually a, a, a life of going in a habitual pattern of sinning. I'm not, we're not again saying that we are not bound to temptation. We're not going to uh, be uh, weak in, in, in our own flesh, but we're talking what, what brings Romans, for example, chapter eight, verse one says, there is now therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ, the things of Christ you will do. You know, the having that 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 peace with God, that being justified by faith, that having his righteousness in my life, it gives me that power to obey, that power to be able to, by his grace, have that that faithfulness, have that that willingness to keep his commandments, and I delight to do his will. So <clears throat> when we see this third angel's message, again, it is a message that is giving us hope and determination, and also the key to be able to be ready. It means to have Jesus in our hearts. It means to have Christ, his righteousness in me, so that I, and and through his power, can have both. Keep the commandments of God, and through his power again, have his faith, the same faith that Christ did, to be able to endure to the end. Now, Tim, you had a thought you wanted to share. Well, I'd like to read two Bible verses. The first is Romans 6, verse 12. And this verse tells us very clearly that it is possible once we have been born again and the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us to successfully resist temptation. Romans 6, 12 says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lusts thereof. Pretty clear command, isn't it? In fact, if you are born again, uh, God not only says you can do this, but this should be the experience that through the power of my Holy Spirit you can have Christ's victory over your sin. Now, when does that happen? Many say, well, of course, that will happen eventually when we get on the other side of the second coming and so forth. 1 John 4, 17 says this, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Hmm. 1 John 4, 17. So the Bible is very clear that Uh, It is possible, not on our own, but for a born-again Christian in whom the Holy Spirit dwells, it is possible to live as Jesus lived in, in terms of this, in keeping the commandments of God and in exercising the same kind, uh, quality of faith that Jesus demonstrated while he was here on earth. It is possible uh, to be as he was even in this world. Amen. And, you know, uh, Tim, I know we're running out of time and sadly we cannot even go f- deeper than, than we have uh, on this subject. But uh, <clears throat> I do want to leave this in their minds of our listeners, and in, in, which is the kind of my, the thoughts of my heart, uh, what's been in my burden, in my heart. There is definitely a need in our lives personally and then collectively in the church to have a different experience a true conversion experience daily with the Lord. Um, it is sad that we do not really have love for one another. And that is how we can, you know, without a shadow of doubt, we can say that we are still in, in rebellion. We have not achieved this experience of having the patience of God, of the, the saints, the patience of the saints, that, that, that the two elements of Christ, of having his commands of God and to have the faith of Jesus. But it is a promise that can be obtained. And we just want to ask that you will search the scriptures, you study more and, and, and dig deeper in your daily walk with God to, re, to so that you may have that experience with the Lord and you may be one of those saints that have his patience and have this experience of Jesus. May God bless you and we'll see you again tomorrow. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.